we sleep, we got to reverse it. They live, we sleep, we got to start learning. The U.S. approves $500 million arms sales to Taiwan. This is, of course, one of many, many dots that people need to connect to see the coming war that is about to happen. A lot of people, when I say that, say that this is fear mongering and that we're trying to scare people. We're not trying to scare people. We're trying to prepare them for the truth of what is happening right now. There are major powers at play right now that want to start war. And if people don't understand that and they think that it's all for show, then they don't realize how many of these guys are on the committees for these war companies like Boeing, Raytheon, uh, Northup and Grumman. They are all uh, ratcheting up every one of their production facilities and they're getting prepared for something massive. Not to mention all of the deals happening between uh, other countries buying a ton of gear and equipment and uh, defense systems. It is all happening right now. Uh, right now, the State Department on Wednesday approved a potential 500 million arms sale to Taiwan for infrared search and track systems for the island's F-16 fighter jets. The Pentagon's Defense Security Cooperation Agency, uh, uh, of course, said the sale is to the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office, Taiwan's de facto embassy in the U.S., as Washington and Taipei don't have formal diplomatic relations, which is pretty nuts to even think about. It says that State Department's approval begins a period where Congress could back the potential deal, but there is widespread bipartisan support for arming Taiwan and virtually no opposition. So everybody is for it. Nobody is against it. But yet there's still issues. China is going to get pissed off. We don't really care what China thinks. Uh, but again, there are some people in our government that probably uh, will try to slow this down because China's in their pocket. We're going to talk about this and much, much more uh, T-Man is back on Twitter. He uh, posted his mugshot. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about everything that is happening with Russia, UKR, and some of the huge developments that are happening. And, of course, what the Fam military members are saying right now. So we'll be back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. Otherwise we start burning. They live, we sleep, we got to reverse it. They live, we sleep, we got to start learning. They live, we sleep, we got to return it. Look the way you was, otherwise we start burning. They live, we sleep, we got to reverse it. They live, we sleep, we got to start learning. They live, we sleep, we got to return it. Look the way you was, otherwise we start burning. They live, we sleep. So there, are, there is a, a ton of moves being made right now. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that is new that every single article, tweet, video, picture, document is going to be over on marfuglenews.com. There's a full bibliography for all of our sources. That way you have access to them at your fingertips. All you have to do is look for today's thumbnail. He's back and huge updates, major updates, the return. Uh, make sure to click on that. Then you will find that you have every single article, tweet, video, picture, document referenced and archived with a searchable uh, bar up at the top. So you can actually go back through all of the previous shows if you remember something or want to make your own connection. Say you've watched a show in the past and you say, wait, that article two years ago has something to do with this. And you guys covered this. Let us know. Go back through our website and find it and uh, let us know how it, it ties in. You can email us at at marfuglenews.com or dex at marfuglenews.com if you have breaking tips. Uh, so again, there is a lot happening right now 
Uh, so we're going to get into it tonight. Tonight is a call-in show. So you can call in at 2244-00-MARF. That's again, 2244-00-MARF. Uh, first, let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So Dex is going to be on the phones. So if you do call, you're going to be calling 2244-00-MARF, and that number is scrolling right down below. And then you're going to press option four when you get to our phone tree. When you get to that phone tree, you will be directed right back uh, to Dex, and then Dex can get you on the show. So you definitely want to get in earlier in the show if you ever call in. Uh, if you need to call one or two phones, get uh, get in there and try to call right now. Uh, so I guess before we open this up, though, I do want to remind go to marfuglenews.com slash friends. All of our wonderful mods are there, and then all of our wonderful friends. Uh, there's tons of great creators down there, including survival uh, channels that will help you kind of fill the gaps of where we may tell you what the problem is. A lot of these channels have the solution. So make sure to go check those out. Uh, so uh, Dex, it, it, before you uh, b- before you click over real quick, I did want to talk to you about uh, Taiwan and then of course the Navy commander in Japan uh, saying what he was going to say. So d- do you want to talk about this? There are amazingly dangerous times, says outgoing Navy commander in Japan. This is an, yet another commander that's coming out and saying that we're basically really close. Well, yeah, exactly. And another, you know, the the outgoing commander of the Navy Air Facility in Tokyo uh, did this morning on his way out. And obviously, you got to, you know, we listen and we we've, we've reported on a lot of these leaders that have made, especially in the military, that have made these statements. And it's not necessarily just because they're leaving. Some are still there and they've made these statements, um, Minahan and others. But, you know, here's yet another. And this one, this person is obviously very close and probably very much in the know of what's going on in the Pacific region, especially being that he was in charge of that uh, facility and uh, the air facility there in Tokyo. So uh, for him to come out and say, you know, look, things aren't working, aren't looking as good um as as we've done we need to you know be better uh, than we have before and i guess this all leads back to this whole notion that uh you know the threat from uh china and taiwan and then even to some extent north korea uh, is real and it's something that is you know is shifting the dynamics of what we're trying to train for and have to to be prepared for in the pacific what do you think adam well, here, here's the thing. If you get all these guys in a room, a lot of these people that doubt, they really don't follow every last time that something like this gets said. And uh, Dex, what's crazy is that, you know, me and you talk to Fam military members, including some very high ranking military members. And they've, I, I, what, how it was put to me is if any of these uh, the doubters were in a, a party or something with a bunch of these commanders and a bunch of these generals and colonels, and they heard them directly tell them, hey, you need to get prepared. This stuff is really going down. When they hear it on Fox News, they won't do anything about it. But if they heard that in person, if they were at a barbecue with family and friends, and they go, oh, yeah, that guy over there, he's a general. And they talked to him, and he said, you need to get your stuff prepped. They would do it over uh, overnight. They would get their stuff together. Uh, but people don't believe the middleman. They don't believe the media. That's the thing. Uh, Dax, how how many military members do we talk to on a regular basis that say that people need to get prepped? Oh, all the time. I don't I don't know of a single military, you know, military member uh, active, uh, recently uh, retired um, or having immediate family that's in that hasn't told us you should be prepping and you should be getting prepared. And it's not for the end of the world. It's usually for uh, it's usually for you know the more subtle things that will happen. If we do get into a massive world war, all of a sudden supply chains are going to be irked, and they're going to be completely uh, you know stopped in some some ways and stopped in some places. If we get in a war with China, uh, just realize that it will be ten times, a thousand times worse than what happened during CV when the containers aren't coming in. Because we still had planes and different things coming in. We're talking about uh, multiple countries getting involved in conflict where they turn their manufacturing plants that usually manufacture, say, Q-tips, and they turn that into something that's making ammunition. 
Uh, our generation has not lived through a massive world war, and that is what we're heading into. That's what uh, many of us believe has already started. Uh, many, m- m- uh, much of this war is is unseen because it's happening um, and it's being covered up or it's something that they don't talk about or it's financial or it's cyber and they don't tell us. We know for a fact that there were over 700 attacks on our grid and only two were publicized. Most of them went to the Department of Energy, uh, then, you know, went forward and got and got put into uh, what was it? The uh, the report. Uh, gosh, I'm forgetting the acronym for it, but it, they got put in a report for it and they never got put out to the public. So we know that there are, are events like that or cyber events that are happening and they are chalked up as, oh, it was an error. It was a technical glitch. We've had airlines, we've had supply chains, we've had uh, gas and fuel lines go down. We've had all of these things happen, and none of these are what the the big one would bring. The big one, a big cyber event or a big hack or a a, a big grid down, it would be hell on earth, or at least in the affected countries. So this is why we are telling people you really need to start uh, getting your head out and you need to start prepping. Um, and do it responsibly, do it at a responsible pace. Don't sell your house and go live in a camper. Uh, but you should be buying extra food and water every single week. Then you won't be caught like the, the rest of the people sitting five hours in a Costco line waiting to walk into a store with empty shelves. It was, it was it's so stupid. There were so many people in our group because we talked about it six months before the first word of, of the V came out in 2019. Uh, there were people that said thank you because... We were stressing that they are practicing for this event like it's happening tomorrow. And tomorrow came and it happened. A lot of people gave us crap then. Now we're telling you this is what we believe is going to happen next. And it's not just us. It's the military group members. Uh, That's why I say if you were in the same room with these people, you would say, okay, all right. Because we trust whoever we trust. That's who will go, okay, that's what's going to get the fire lit under your feet. But we don't trust media. And, uh, of course, media communicating some of this stuff, which is real, they, they'll never believe it coming out of their mouths. So I hope that you guys heed the message, especially with the next year. We're talking in a year time frame. Things are going to look a whole lot different. Um, one, one of our friends said that it's going to be completely different. All right. And then, uh, so make sure to call in 2244 marf If you're active or retired military, feel free to call in. We would love to hear from you. Uh, give us a call, 224 marf That number is scrolling right down below. And then we have Fukushima radioactive waste dumped in the ocean may cause mutant animals, says expert. I, this isn't me. <laughs> this, is, this is an expert saying this. The, straight out of a Simpsons episode we might end up with some three-eyed uh, fish. That's essentially what's being said here. It said new plans to dump waste from the Fukushima Daiichi uh, nuclear plant into the ocean could create mutant animals, an expert has hinted. Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings, or TEPCO, are set to start launching treated and diluted wastewater from the 2011 disaster into the Pacific today. First of all, I know that they say that they tried to like filter this stuff out, whatever else. I I am so so kind of blown away that people are so weird about how we need to reduce our carbon fr- footprint, uh, but they just they don't have a better solution than dumping this into the water. Uh, they're literally going to be dumping it into the ocean with fish that they are going to then catch, and then we are going to be eating. Uh, this just seems so crazy to me. And I'm not an expert on it. Maybe you go, oh, well, it's totally safe and the levels are that low. Well, they've told us about our water in that way, and we know that's not true. They've told us about everything and say, oh, well, the levels are acceptable. I would think an acceptable level of any kind of contaminants or, you know, iron, whatever it may be, pharmaceuticals, would be 0.000%. But again, I'm not the EPA. And it said that uh, they will be set to to release it. It said the decision has been a controversial one with many concerned about the untold effect of wastewater could have on marine life and those of us who are partial to seafood. Professor Timothy Musu has been researching the effects of nuclear disaster for 12 years and said that scientists couldn't rule out worrying mutations in animals 
if the plans go ahead thanks to an under-researched radioactive chemical called tritium. <laughs> like, this is literally something that I think The Simpsons is going to predict uh, again. Yet again, there's going to be another prediction from The Simpsons. Um, this is absolutely wild, and uh, it is why many people over there have actually grabbed uh, salt. They've gotten year supplies of salt. People ran out and they grabbed all sorts of sea-related uh, foods like uh, seaweed for Asian foods, uh, salt, all sorts of things with salt in it. Uh, they grabbed it before this because people are paranoid about even eating anything that will come from the sea now. Like, this is quite uh, disturbing and ridiculous. Uh, thank you, Scooby Doo Do Right, for uh, hosting. Uh, thank you so much for bringing all those people over. I appreciate you, Scooby Doo Do Right. And again, we will have to return the favor. Uh, we have Yobi in the house, Poco Loco over on D Live, Willie Fix It, uh, Johnson. And uh, again, thank you, Poco Loco. Uh, let's see here. And then over on uh, YouTube, thank you, everybody that has already popped in. It looks like we have Rhiannon S. Hey, Rhiannon, nice to see you. Um, say hi to your hubby and, uh, to your fam. And let's see here. Um, Macho Camacho, Rip Curl is in the house. Hey, Rip Curl, th make sure to drop an M in the chat for your mods. They are doing an awesome job keeping it peaceful and awesome. And then thank you, Zen1AZ, Nana MT. Uh, last night, in fact, you uh, dropped in at the very end of the show. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you for today. Thank you so much uh, for dropping in to be first. Thank you, Nana MT. And then uh, Zen One AZ, Samuel Turner, uh, Exit the Narrative, K Earl Long Jr., Bible Talk Triple Seven, Samuel Turner, uh, Dangerous, and Bethany Olinger, and of course Rumble the Crown uh, Clown. Thank you so much for for uh, uh, supporting us this week. What do you think about the uh, nuclear? The waste being dumped into the Pacific Ocean. Are you going to trust food from this area anymore? Let me know. Give me a call at 224400MARF. And then we have a defense ministry denies Chinese nuclear sub accident in the Taiwan Strait. Essentially, what happens when they deny something, usually there might be some sort of hint or some little kind of inkling of truth. But what they're saying is they're speaking at a regularly scheduled press conference in Taipei, and a spokesman said that military intelligence and surveillance did not detect any evidence of a Chinese submarine crash near the Taiwan Strait. In recent days, <clears throat> social media platforms such as X, formerly known as Twitter, have been rife with rumors that a Chinese Type 093 Shang class nuclear power attack submarines had an accident in the Taiwan Strait, taking the lives of everyone aboard. It said, according to The Sun, that there has been no information collaborating or corroborating uh, the sinking of the Chinese submarine. He added that no other authorities, such as their Chinese counterparts, have issued a statement on the matter. The MND is actively engaged in surveillance and reconnaissance missions and carefully monitors all the dynamics of the sea and airspace around the Taiwan Strait, according to The Sun. So... Here's the thing. Why did they even address it? Um, it? Usually if they address it, there's some reason why they are doing so, and there may be an inkling of truth to it if they are. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below or give us a call. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to get the, uh, we're going to turn the phones on here. Two seconds. Let's see here. We already have uh, Swetnam Ministries. So we're going to get uh, Swetnam, Josh, aka Swetnam Ministries on. Uh, real quick, I do want to remind you, we are independent. And uh, again, if you want to get into a generator, I would highly recommend one of the best. Go and check out the Energy Flex 1500. This is a modular system. It works like Legos. It can be expanded up to 96 batteries, and it can be turned into whatever system you want it to be. The, the reason why this is one of the best is because you can start out with a base unit. You can expand it. You can mod it to have whatever features that you want. And when they create new fe features in the future, you can actually add those in just like a Lego brick and you pop them in between the base unit and the batteries. So if you want this to be a UPS system, you can actually pop in the UPS mod. I'll actually show you that tomorrow. I just got mine in and it is really, really cool. That means essentially you can plug this uh, your stuff into this and then this into the wall 
and then when the power goes out, it will automatically switch over to the generator. This is already a great system because it's silent. It can be ran inside. You don't have to worry about people hearing it from blocks away and knowing that you have power when nobody else doesn't because you want to be a gray man. And you do not need to store gasoline for this. Many people can't store gasoline in the first place, but even if you could, uh, you're, you might not be thinking about what will happen to gas stations and to everything else to try to uh, try to get new gas after things hit the fan. Now, even if it doesn't hit the fan, if you have a regional disaster, this is where this comes in clutch. Even if you have your power go out for more than a day, that is where this comes in clutch. If uh, with this teamed up with solar panels, you will have unlimited power. That's what's so awesome about it. And again, this is the same company that's outfitting the Army, uh, the new Flex Tactical, the, the tactical uh, Flex Tactical. This has built-in batteries, uh, b battery heaters, and it has a steel reinforced frame, 1,500-pound uh, latches, so this thing could fall off a truck. This is the one that is Army tough. So this one is the best of the best, and if you want really legit the best, then I would highly go for this one. But most people will be good with just the Flex 1500. Go check it out. This was designed with uh, Energy and the Air Force Research Laboratory, and it just won the SBIR Phase Two contract with the military. This is, is such a cool gadget. The fact that you can use it when it's not disaster time, bring power basically anywhere with you, use your tools out in the field, uh, use it for whatever you can imagine. Uh, make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy, I-N-E-R-G-Y, and make sure to use the code Marfugel. Uh, that will get you a discount and it will help support our channel. We're truly independent. Thank you guys for doing so. All right, let's get Josh, a.k.a. Sweatna Ministries on. What is going on? Josh, you're live. Hey, man. Long time to be here. Hey, nice, well, is, nice really. to see you. Nice to talk to you. Yes, sir. So I was actually calling about the BRICS nations, and I know you guys have an article already that you guys are using. But it's crazy that there's going to be those nations coming together um, pretty much puts aside America in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, it, it's, a, it's a real thing. This is a threat to the U.S. dollar. We talked about it yesterday. This is a huge deal. This is... yeah. Anytime the dollar is threatened, yeah, we go to war. Yeah, and that's it's a big indicator of wars really around the corner, and uh, it's a uh, it's not good um, for us or the rest of the world, really, um, due to what kind of um, war is going to break out. Um, that and a few other things that are happening next month as well. It, actually falls in line with the that peace agreement that they are doing the reconfirming of their positions on the 2030 and you know their plan the agenda yep and then this this piece here and uh, the piece on screen by the way Josh uh, just to point out to everybody the oil powers the big oil big big oil what the world has been running on yep. are and, now expanding into bricks yep so it's a huge deal yeah, 80% of, from what I've been reading and looking at, 80% of gas and oil will be coming from those other nations. They'll be running 80% of the oil around the world, from what I'm understanding. And uh, not just that, but I also wanted to talk about the heat waves that are going on. All right, go ahead, Josh. As well. And um, so the heat waves that are going on right now is actually been foretold in the Bible. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the Bible, um, in Malachi, it talks about there's a day coming that's going to burn as an oven in the first verse. Um, for of you that like Bible prophecy and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff that's in the Bible that's actually coming to fruition as uh as the years go by. Um, so, and then the, the Euphrates River is another sign of that heat, drying it up out of Revelation uh, 16 or 17. And uh, 
but anyways, yeah, I just I just thought I'd jump on and bricks is really what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Give you guys a little bit of a prophecy update, letting you guys know, hey, we're close. Yep, and if, if people don't know why um, the oil, all the big oil powers jumping in and trying to work with bricks is a big deal, uh, then I don't know what to say. This is this is a giant giant deal. The whole world runs on the petrodollar. Well, the suppliers of all the petro in the world are going to be jumping in bed with China and Russia. So that's not good. <coughs> all right. Well, thank you, Josh. I appreciate you calling. No, in. it's not. No, it isn't. You're very welcome. Have a good night. All right. Thank you so much. God bless, man. Bye bye. That was uh, that was Josh, uh, aka Sweatnam Ministries, and uh, again, thank you, Josh from Indiana. All right, and then um, I guess well, we still we actually have this later, so we'll we'll talk about that here in a second. Unless, yeah, I think it's we have it. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about this article here in a minute, and then the AI surveillance tool DHS uses to detect sentiment and emotion. We've talked about how DHS has been developing some pretty disturbing things, frankly, and the patents that have been going through. Uh, rapidly deployable checkpoints. Do, do you just think for a second what a rapidly deployable checkpoint could be used for? And this was around the time of a CV. They they wanted it quick too. They they put a really short deadline on that. They wanted a mobile radio uh, radiological detector. Uh, they wanted a cell phone app that could possibly plug something into the cell phone to detect uh, disease. <laughs> uh, pretty wild. They wanted uh, broadband communication without the use of towers, uh, basically a broadband walkie-talkie, which, after the military gets it, usually if there is some sort of commercial use for it, then it comes down to the people. At around that same time, we actually got some of the first like broadband walkie-talkie features, and not we're not talking about like the uh, StarTel or whatever that com- company is that's been doing it for years, Nextel or whatever it is, but we're talking about it on a totally different system essentially a walkie-talkie that can go from, you know, Washington to New York, that kind of thing. They wanted that. And then they wanted a mass fatality tracking system. Now, we already have something uh, along those lines, but they wanted a new one that would be able to, again, be a tracking system for mass fatalities. That's absolutely creepy. creepy. This was all on the same list. Now, again, this article, uh, let's see here. This, basically, this was used, this information comes from public records. It says uh, they are letting you use all of the FOIA that they did to actually get all of this stuff. And it said that um, we are making it available to all readers as a public service. FOIA reporting could be expensive, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. And it says Department of Homeland Security has bought millions of dollars worth of a software from a company that uses artificial intelligence to detect, quote, sentiment and emotion in online posts, according to a cache of documents obtained by 404 Media. It says CPP told 404 Media it is using technology to analyze open source information related to inbound and outbound travelers who the agency believes may threaten public safety. I can already tell you uh, where this is headed. Uh, this next part is actually important. It says, it, it says national security or lawful trade and travel. In this case, specific company called Fivecast also offers AI-enabled object rec- recognition in o- images and video and detection of risk terms and phrases across multiple languages, according to one of the documents. Marketing materials promote the software's ability to provide targeted data collection from big social platforms like Facebook and Reddit, and I'm sure X, but also specifically names smaller communities like 4chan, 8kun, and Gab. To demonstrate its functionality, 5Cast promotional uh, materials explain that the software was able to track social media posts and related persons of interest, starting with just basic bio details from a New York Times Magazine article about the members of the far paramilitary Boog Mu movement. 404 Media also obtained leaked audio of Fivecast employee explaining how the tool could be used against trafficking networks and propaganda operations. 
The news signals CPB's continued use of artificial intelligence in its monitoring of travels and targets, which can include U.S. citizens. In May, uh, it revealed the CPB's use of another AI tool to screen travelers, which could link people's social media posts to their social security number and to location data. The latest news shows that CPB has deployed multiple AI-powered systems that provides insights into what exactly these tools claim to do. So you have to realize, so, and, and by the way, remember when fa Facebook didn't require you to put in all of your information? You could just start an account. I, I remember when Facebook first came out, you could just put your name in whatever you wanted your name to be. And then they slowly like started adding more things. Now, we know that Facebook has been highly connected to all of the governments. And if you look up LifeLog, you probably think it is, right? But then they started doing things like if even if somebody literally pressed a report button, it would go, we want to see your ID. We want you to send in pictures of your ID to confirm it's you, to keep it everything safe. Well, all of these things tied into with the actual technological advancement of our cell phones, which many folks that are just getting into this don't really think about this stuff, but why our cell phones slowly got better cameras, fingerprint sensors, facial recognition for security purposes, and then, of course, uh, iris scanners on our phones. And why did they need a front camera? Why did selfies, why were selfies even existent, right? So we could take a picture two inches from our face? If you really thought about that when it first came out, why would anybody even do that? Uh, they say it's because, oh, you could see the screen and line up your shot. Selfies with the first cameras were just a pain in the butt. If you wanted to set up your phone somewhere and then stand five feet away, then how are you going to push the button? Why were selfies invented? Many of the people I've talked to that literally worked in government back then when the cell phones were first getting their first cameras said that they literally did this so they could get pictures of every person using cell phones. Why is this a cheaper technology that they want everybody to have? Well, cell phones are essentially the, the mark, and it's evolving into where you're going to get it implanted into your head or into your hand. Now, that sounds like, oh, that's loopy, but it's actually happening. As far as the tools, they're going to be able to, this is my Minority Report type stuff. If you haven't seen the 2001 movie Minority Report, go watch it because it's a reality that is, is uh, fast coming up on us. They are now using facial recognition to predict somebody being a thief before they even steal. They even have a system in Japan, a camera system that can watch people, watch their uh, shiftiness, how they look over their shoulder. It will take their temperature. It will uh, it, it detect uh, shakiness in the voice. And basically it had a 95% or something over 90%. I, I want to say it was 97% or something, uh, um, essentially of predicting that people were about to shoplift. And they tested this in real world situations. And they were able to detect somebody that was going to steal before they steal. So imagine in the future, if it gets to 100%, then you're in a store and they you look over your shoulder a couple times, all of a sudden you're in handcuffs because they said you are going to steal something. This is a tracking thing that will go through all of this. Why this plays into the whole Facebook and adding all of this stuff is because all of these companies are secretly working with these uh, companies to be able to track everybody and to watch everything you say. It's gotten to the point, it doesn't matter if you are on incognito or something and you're going in somewhere to talk trash, they are tracking you wherever you are. And uh, it was so funny when we started our like email, um, email list, people were like, oh, they're data mining. With our, by the way, to sign up for notifications, we need your email, which you can make. That's one of the few things you can make secretly and do whatever. You can add a whatever that secure email is and do it and so nobody knows who you are. But if you're on YouTube commenting that, you're literally on a platform owned by the biggest surveillance company in the world, the Google. So I just think it's absolutely hilarious that people comment that under their account on YouTube where everyone is being tracked and traced. It's, it's silly. Um, this, the, these tools are going to make it to where you go to go fly somewhere. You're going to vacation. And then all of a sudden they go, well, you posted something on your Facebook a couple weeks ago. We don't like, and uh, you're on a no fly list. They've already had this, but now it's going to be interconnected and interweaved between everything. And I mean, everything.
So there's no prepping for this. This is more like, hey, now you know. And it's, um, you know, people say, well, we need to stand up against it. it what, I guess what do we do, right? The, there needs to be, it, what do you do? Do you start a, a Facebook group saying we need to stand up against it? Well, they just shut that group down. Do you, uh, how do you physically like gather people to do these kind of things? If you gather them online, then they're track traced and monitored anyway. There's not really a way to do it without um, having them one step ahead of you. Isn't that kind of a trippy thing? It used to be like word of mouth and, and all of that. But again, now that everybody's digital, that's much harder to do. Well, maybe that will make a comeback one day. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And then Wagner Mercenaries actively dismantling camps in Belarus, satellite imagery shows. So the narrative now, again, we don't know if it's true or not, but obviously if Wagner is truly perished, they're essentially telling us that all of the camps are being dismantled. Now, I'm sure this is a kind of sign of light for anybody that's supporting UKR. They're like, whoa, oh, that's great. That means that uh, there's one less threat. There's, this whole group is down. This isn't going to end the conflict. The, the private military group known as Wagner, uh, even if they do dissolve, it's not going to stop anything. It might have stopped something that was uh, planned. It might, it, a lot of people don't even believe that he is truly gone. But if he is gone and his right-hand man, somebody will probably take it over. I would assume he would have set up for this being in his position. But even if they don't, essentially what they're saying is that it's uh, some, somehow dissolved. It says, a camp of the Wagner Group Mercenary Company is being dismantled near the village and military base of Tassel in Apisavoshi district in Mogilev Oblast, Belarus, Radio Free Europe said. It says the uh, Radio Free Europe and uh, uh, journalists published a fresh satellite image taken by Planet Labs. According to their calculations, about one-third of all tents in the Wagner camp have already been removed, with 101 out of 273 having disappeared. Now, I saw another theory on this, that they were actually moving completely. Like, they were not dismantling, but they were literally moving and going to start fighting. I don't know if that's true. It's more likely that they're just dismantling it. But how much of this is narrative? How much of this is uh, circus? Uh, because, again, they, like, like somebody said yesterday, like, oh, when, when Wagner was pronounced, you know, gone from this plane crash, a lot of people said... Well, they're literally having memorials, you know, at uh, Wagner. They very well could. They also said that they were doing a mutiny, but that mutiny looked pretty fake. So this might be a tactic. It might be so people come out and say their true words about Wagner. Maybe people that are afraid of Wagner will speak their mind. Could be the same kind of tactic that was used before. If he truly is gone, then I wonder what the people at the very top know about his uh, crash. Was it done by the U.S.? Was it done by a NATO power? And Vlad knows it. Or was it really done by Vlad? Did Vlad take out his, his critic and this guy he's been fake fighting with? I don't know. Would, it, would he take him out? Rip Curl Readiness made a good point. He says, remember that Putin was a former KGB, and he's very uh, thorough, and he's, he thinks through things, and he's patient. So it very well could be. But... That whole mutiny thing does not make sense. Let me know your opinion on it. Give me a call at 2244 marf Again, that's 2244 marf and then press option 4 when you get to the phone tree. By the way, thank you, everybody that has already popped in. Thank you, Nana, Montana, uh, Nana MT, for popping in and supporting right off the bat. Kimbria, Karen from Columbus, thank you for the diamond. Says the end is near. Says hello, Marfuglers. Love to the mods, Adam, Dex, and Wive. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then J Girl, that's me. Thank you for the diamond. Says, love this family. Hey, I'm glad you are having a good time. And I'm super glad that you guys keep D Live alive. Um, thank you guys so much. And uh, let's see here. Um, uh, uh, Darren, thank you for subscribing. Exit the narrative. Says, I built a social network with no tracking, no ads, no censorship, no affiliate marketing, etc. I design, manage, and fully own it myself. It's free. Exit the narrative. I will have to check it out. I didn't know that it was an actual network thing. I thought it was a channel. So I will have to check that out. 
And then Thomas C. Bryan, anyone else notice the U.S. flag in the change of command in Japan? It says, quote, no, or, quote, no fringe. If you know, you know, just saying. Thomas C. Bryan, I'm live and doing several things, but I have to process that. I'll have to look at that. I know that we, uh, we just covered something. Let me see here. Yeah. Mm, I don't know if you're talking about this image, but I don't know if this is, this is, um, it, well, it was ours. It was, I think it was our, yeah, it was our outgoing commander at that base in Japan. I think, I, yeah. So that makes sense. It's, it's like our base at Japan or whatever. And then, uh, let's see here. And we have, was Pregazin already perished? Mystery over Wagner plane crash, bodies, and missing head. So this adds even more mystery to this. Okay, so listen to this. An alleged investigator who was present at the scene of the plane crash involving Wagner's group chief Pregazin has leaked distressing information about the state of the corpses at the crash site. It says the unnamed source claimed that several of the bodies discovered lacked heads. Let me guess, their fingertips were gone too and maybe their teeth? Doesn't say that, but I, I would see that coming next. Several of the actual people they found in the plane didn't have the top part of their body. If that isn't suspicious, and to this person say they're they're having memorials, like look at what's literally being said. Now it's coming out that there's no heads. I don't think they have a crazy ex girlfriend or something. This is uh, this looks shady as heck. Video footage captured shortly after the crash depicts the scene of chaos and devastation with emergency responders and authorities on site attempting to manage the aftermath. The leaked details, if confirmed, could potentially signal a deliberate act or even a sinister element in the tragedy. Well, I guess that uh, they're saying that he could have already been perished before it went down, like there was some sort of coup in the plane and they went and went Saudi Arabia on him. I don't know. Or you could look out down a different angle and go, okay, so now you can't prove that he's actually gone. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And it says, assuming that Pregazin was on the Embraer private jet that crashed, will his body ever be found? Hmm. All right, we're going to go over to our next caller. And... Uh, Let's see here. We have. Okay, it looks like uh, Dex. It looks like that that collar dropped, and it was uh, was it Crichton? So that's okay. We can get another one. Do should I move on, or are you screening? Oh, keep going. I'll let you know. Okay, give us a call at two two four four zero zero Marf. We lost Crichton. So, and by the way, Crichton. Do you what does Crichton mean to any of you? Do you know the the name Crichton? And what is the first thing you think of when you hear the name Crichton? I think of a color and a small person. If you know, then you know. Before we move on, make sure to go check out EMP Shield. And this is a device that can protect your cars, your trucks, your motorcycles, your ATVs. If you want to truly be prepared for either an EMP strike or multiple EMP strikes or a Carrington level event from the sun, again, you probably heard that a solar event could knock out our grids, knock out our electronics, and knock out our cars, then you would want to get one of these on your vehicle. Uh, this can prevent and protect against not only EMPs, but a Carrington level event from the sun, and it will ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device. This same company is contracted with agencies like DHS, DOD, and now they're protecting the Texas grid with the Demso team. So this is a uh, no-frills product that you can 
wire into your car in less than 10 minutes the red wire to the red, black to black on the battery, and then green to a part of your frame, basically green to ground. Red to red, black to black, green to ground, and that's it. It takes literally like six, seven, eight minutes maybe, and then boom, you have protection. You can get home to bug in, or you can get out to bug out. So make sure to go over. You can get $50 off per device. So if you have multiple vehicles or want to get it as a gift or get a second one for somebody, then that's a huge, huge discount. And it stacks on top of any uh, ongoing sale. So go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. They also make a EMP shield for the Flex 1500 solar generator. They also make one for your home. The home version, once wired in by an electrician, which I believe that's one of the only ones you, you should have an electrician do, uh, that will protect everything within 250 linear feet of where it is wired in. So anything plugged in, your fridge, your TVs, your electronics, your computers, it's going to be protected not only from the EMP or CME, but also from lightning. So if you live somewhere with lightning, this might actually be uh, pay for itself with one lightning strike. Again, mar marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to use the code MARF. All right. Um, and make sure to give us a call at 2244 marf Again, that's 2244-006273. All right. And then uh, Ukraine says its special forces pulled off a daring amphibious raid into occupied Crimea, hit Russian troops, and raised the flag on the peninsula. It says that UK our special forces made an amphibious raid into the occupied Crimean Peninsula on Thursday where they battled Russian troops and planted the country's flags. Kiev's military intelligence agency is revealed. It says, while the daring mission does not appear to have immediate operational impact, the fact that UKR got boots on the ground in the territory is a symbolic victory. It says it is the latest in a string of engagements around Crimea, which UKR has vowed to liberate from Russia. UKR's main directed of intelligence, part of the country's defense ministry, also known as the HUR, HUR, which is probably, uh, <laughs> probably going to be the only HUR that people can say here in a couple years, said in a statement that it conducted the, quote, special operation with the support of the country's naval forces, according to translation by state-owned news agency Ukraineform. Uh, it says that the special operations units used watercraft and landed uh, on the shore near Osimnivka, a small village at the westernmost point at Crimea that sits along the Black Sea. On Wednesday, the HUR said, in a Russian, uh, said a Russian S-400 air defense system one of the Moscow's more formidable weapons was destroyed near the village. So whether this is, uh, we don't know what is true coming out of the media, out of either one of these countries, but essentially for them to, if they did get in there, uh, then that would be forward movement. Uh, many people that I have seen comment to even this story and what this has been talked about on Twitter say they do not believe it. And they said that they're probably actually in reality getting smashed. Uh, by all of these systems. I thought, it, just related to this, I thought that Colonel McGregor on uh, Tucker had a really great point. And I don't know if you've seen that interview with Colonel McGregor, but he's also been on Redacted. He's been on a, a, a bunch of other shows. He essentially says that UKR is being wiped out. But the one thing that he did say that makes, it makes a lot of sense is if you actually know the history of Russia, Russia was one of the first countries to connect its satellite capabilities to its military capabilities. And how they did this is they would connect their surveillance systems in space to their defense systems on the ground. So they may have a problem going into UKR, but UKR coming into Russia has a way bigger problem, uh, and especially because of the certain tanks and things that they are getting. Uh, McGregor talked about the certain tanks that they were sending to Ukraine and how the older systems that they have in them uh, essentially create, or the, the engines, the, the turbine motors or the turbine engines that are actually from jets were put into these tanks, create a ton of heat. And that heat signature is visible from space. So it's kind of like you're a sitting duck. Not only that, they only last about eight hours before they need to be brought back and, and refueled, all of this stuff. Well, he talks about how Russia has this system and all of these defense systems that are kind of burnt into their uh, de their defensive borders. And if you go even near 
uh, if even if you go near Russia, essentially the space systems would identify you, and within six or seven minutes, they would have missiles up in the air and wipe out whatever comes close. It's kind of if you could imagine if you had a uh, a dart gun on your ring doorbell camera, and if anybody popped up in front of that ring doorbell, it would dart them, uh, and it was accurate and would go. Um, their defense system from space is one of the first and one of their best systems. So a lot of folks think that they're super backwards and that they don't have uh, a lot of stuff. They actually did a lot of firsts. I looked that up and they were four or five years ahead of the U.S. in a lot of areas. So I think that people really need to realize if they are going to go into Russia, it's going to be a lot harder than Russia going into UKR. Uh, this. I don't know if this is true or not, but we'll see. And then Ukraine's defense intelligence confirms explosion in Crimea and destruction of S-400 missile. And it said, explosions in occupied Crimea took place in the morning of 23 August near a village of Olnenevka and Cape Tarkhunika, destroying a Russian long and medium range S-400 Triumph anti-aircraft missile system. It said, uh, it said the defense intelligence explained that given limited number of such systems in the Russians' arsenal, this is a painful blow to the Russian air defense system, which will have a serious impact on further events of the peninsula. So even if it is absolutely destroyed, there are other detractors that say it is not going to affect them like they are saying here. Um, this is a small win to their critics. They're saying that this is basically not going to affect them. Um, also, a great point that was made about Russia is that they already have uh, all of their systems and all of their manufacturing at, at, uh, at 100% and they're kicking it up. So just like I talked about earlier, like how a Q-tip factory could turn into, you know, a, a bullet factory, that's what they're already doing. They're already mobilizing. They already have mass recruitment going on and they're adding more. They're grabbing from reserves and they're snatching people up and they already have 750,000 soldiers uh, and they're actually recruiting more. So uh, his opinion, Colonel McGregor, said that he believes that there's about 50,000 perished in Russia and about 400,000 in UKR, which is eight times as much. That's one in, one in eight. Um, do you believe that? Let me know. Give me a call at 2244 marf Again, that's 2244 and then G and Putin hail first BRICS expansion in over a decade as Gulf oil powers join. At a moment that China and Russia have envisioned, the future of BRICS is fundamentally an anti-Western bloc of developing nations. The Gulf oil powers, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, have been formally invited to become members, which marks the bloc's first expansion in over a decade. The membership will take effect from the 1st of January 2024. So this is something that is going to happen. Saudi Arabia, which, again, wasn't answering our calls last year, or at least that's what they said, and was rolling out the red carpet for Xi, is now joining the BRICS, uh, this, this BRICS foundation. It said that South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said, adding that additionally Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Iran will be added to the fold next year. Do people not see where this is headed? Look at that. It says uh, Chinese, Chinese President Xi Jinping hailed the rare expansion beyond the current large economies of China, Russia, Brazil, India, China, and South Africa as historic. He said it will, quote, inject new impetus into BRICS cooperation mechanism and further strengthen the power of world peace and development. And he, he whispered out of the side of his mouth, and won't be able to do that social credit score we've been wanting to do. President Putin, too, congratulated the soon-to-be newest members, saying in a video message, I would like to congratulate the new members who will work in a full-scale uh, scale format next year. He says, I would like to assure all of our colleagues, and we will continue to work, that started today on expanding the influence of BRICS in the world. The oil powers just joined Russia and China in the BRICS. If people don't realize why this is absolutely terrifying and why this is going to be a war, I don't know what to say. 
Um, Dex, do, if you if you if we're having issues with it, we can just drop it and we can do another call in tomorrow. Are you? It sounds like you might be screening somebody. Sorry, I was trying to, and then they they got disconnected. So I'm having some phone issues tonight. Sorry. Well, why don't you just join me? We can do it tomorrow. Um, in fact, um, like Chance said, Chance, I would love to have you on the show at some point, or if you want to call in and and talk tonight, it would be a good night because if we're if we directly do it, then we'll have no issues. Uh, but if you want to jump in, Dex, you can. Uh, otherwise, the, the with the bricks thing, I would like for you to pop in on this because this is this is something that uh, most people are not going to understand. Um, I don't fully understand what BRICS is going to do, but I can tell you if it is a threat to our currency and now we've got the Saudi powers joining this, I, I, I at first thought that it was like, oh, they were invited, but it sounds like they're literally going to be joining and they're going to be a part of BRICS. Yeah, is- that's correct. They're the first two that outside of South Africa, which was the last one uh, to ever join. So they're the first two that are going to be joining under the new BRICS and under the new uh, rules that they had instituted that we talked about yesterday. They had agreed, they came up with the agreement um, and they all agreed upon it. So now they've got the first two that are informally in, invited, but there's plenty more that are trying to get in, want to get in, and they're probably going through that process right now. Um, th- these are really important, obviously, as you've already mentioned, they're oil producing uh, Saudi Arabia, which was, was uh, and should say probably is, but was a really strong ally of the U.S. We spend a ton of money with them. Uh, we have military gear, equipment, installations, support, security, all of that there for them. Um, and they spend a ton of money with us uh, back and forth. So there's a really long history of a relationship there. But as we've seen in the past year or two, uh, especially with the current administration, that relationship has pretty much gone south and headed towards uh, Xi as he had made a lot of headway there. Not surprising to see them first on the list. Not surprising also because they're the number two oil producing country in the world right behind the United States at like 10.6 million barrels, uh, billion barrels per day or whatever barrels per day, whatever the number is, 10.6 million. uh, The U.S. is 11.8. So that's a huge amount of oil. By the way, number three is Russia with 10.2. So, um, you know, these numbers, as uh, I think Swetnam was talking, I think he had said it was a a large percentage. And I think if you take the U.S. out, it is 80 percent of non-U.S. But if you take all of the global oil, just the ones that are going to be in the new BRICS category right now, it's about 40 percent of all oil produced in the oil in the world would be made up of Saudi Arabia, Russia, China, um, United Arab Emirates, Brazil, India, and then I guess South Africa, which has hardly any, but they're on the list. So, yeah, it, it's a big deal. I don't think I've ever seen uh, G that happy. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see here. What is this? <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at how happy they are. Look at how happy Winnie the Pooh is there. And uh, kind of reminds me, I, I so want to put them on a roller coaster. Uh, they're just enjoying. It's the life, the good times, right? World domination. <laughs> so fun. All right. And then U.S. Army to have global network connectivity by 2024. We actually covered some of the uh, advancements that happened last year and how they said that they would have this by 2027. Uh, they were claiming that they were going to have this up by 2027. Now it looks like they will have network global connectivity by 2024. It said Lieutenant General John Morrison, uh, D- Deputy Chief of Staff for the Army G6, said during the a- AFCEA TechNet Augusta Conference that the anticipated network will deliver connectivity wherever soldiers need them. Morrison, a, a previous Potomac Officers Club event speaker, also shared that soldiers will have global connectivity on the unclassified network by the end of the 2023 calendar. So it may even come by the latest, uh, latest this year and global access to the secret network by the end of 2024, the summer of 2024. The secret world network, right? 
Morrison said that the network is currently deployed uh, in the Pacific area of responsibility. And it says the deputy of chief of staff's announcement comes after another army official said that the service will focus on network operations, centralization, and network flexibility for the fiscal year of 2024. According to Mark Kitts, Army Program Executive Officer for Command Control and Communications T- uh, Tactical, there are numerous opportunities within this office portfolio to deliver new capabilities to support flexible networking and data processing. It also comes after the Army stated uh, started considering consolidating cybersecurity and network service delivery tasks under the Army Cyber Command. The decision would transition the Army's network infrastructure from a siloed theater, uh, theater-centric model into a more efficient and secure one. I wonder why they would need something like this, where they're, they're, they want to take the current network and bring it off and be on its own separate secure network. This this would uh, I would think would be a pre- uh, in preparation for if something went down then they would still have theirs up, but you would also think if you were an enemy you would want to do something before this all got you know up and running. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Yeah, there's a couple a couple of things that come to mind on this. It's by them building out this network for starters. I'm almost positive it's going to be in the sky. Um, it's probably using satellite capability. It might even be piggybacking off of technology from from Elon. But we do know that the military puts up plenty of satellites themselves, so they may have their own that they're they're doing as for this as well. Um, but you know, think about this right now: global networking. If you need to communicate around the globe for the most part, it's all done over the internet. And the only way to secure that is to then secure either you can, you know, lease and put up your own private fiber and lines and all of that, uh, which some people do for high, 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 high levels of security if they need it. They have their own backhauls and stuff, but then they also encrypt and that's what they have to do. Well, what they're talking about here is building their entire, an entire network just for them, both a, 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 a private one or a um, secret one that is completely secured and then an insecured one. And I think by insecure, it's probably just not as as encrypted uh, as it would be um, on the secure one, as well as, you know, maybe it's more accessible by all infantry as opposed to only selective ones that are allowed on the higher security level. So this is a huge um, undertaking if they're rolling this out and they're rolling it out, you know, by the end of uh, 2024, uh, the summer. Um, and for it to be across the globe, I just wonder how much of it is backhauled on existing technology versus how much of it's going to be in the sky and satellite uh, or in other transmission systems that they've deployed that we just have no ideas about because it's secret and it's part of the military. Darren Trader said, when did this start? And by the way, on, on screen, I, I pulled up the Operation Starfall, which it's still not a thing. I'm just assuming I don't, we, I don't even have to check. But that was that was a different kind of network that would be going up in an emergency situation. I wonder if this is still even needed if Jeff Seven says Red Dwarf. You're behind in the show, but man, that is awesome. Uh, yes, Red Dwarf. When I think of Crichton, I think of Red Dwarf, which was uh, not it's not for everybody, but it was one of my favorite, favorite all time shows of all time. Yeah, really sad how it all ended and what ended up happening with that. But either way, um, but the HR uh, 5123, this is the bill that is, uh, again, not later than 45 days after the date of an enactment of this act, the Secretary of the Air Force, in consul- consultation with the Chief of Space Operations, shall develop and begin implementation of Operation Starfall, which, by the way, just for them to say, like, implement. Operation Starfall, a strategic plan to deploy stratospheric balloons, aerostats, and satellite technology capable of rapidly delivering wireless internet anywhere on the planet from the stratosphere or higher. But it sounds like they already have some sort of system. And I saw the the patents back when this was put through. This was 2021. 2024, fast forward, it looks like they're going to have that permanently. I don't know how exactly they do this. Maybe Operation Starfall has morphed into something like this. But think about this. They will also be able to use they will also be able to give internet connectivity to countries if they need it or if something goes down or if the grid goes down. So, I don't know. Operation Megamind, 
Uh, wonder the effects on the brain, says Patriarchs. Uh, Bible Talk Triple Seven, Jammer One, Anoni Moose. It was a moose that caused the accident. Yeah, one maybe during a shout I'll tell you uh, my family's funny moose story. Aaliyah, good to hear about Stella and praise for your daughter. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad to hear about Stella too. Uh, soon to be Operation Theme All. And then uh, Tom Atier says, when we can try Operation Anarchy. They do. They target people with intermittently and few and far. Targeted individuals aren't lying, says Believe in Jesus. Well, I have met a couple of people that are that have been targeted because of their uh, their background and the stuff that they've been targeted. We know a person who was basically targeted by an entire town uh, because of his criminal record, and he was treated very unfairly and arrested and all sorts of things. And, uh, yeah, like for sure, you know, the guy was attacked and arrested and all sorts of things. And it was literally the same police involved with all the, of the different stuff. So, yeah, that does happen for sure. And then Michigan Lifestyle, uh, Victor Freeman, uh, not a robot, Zen Win AZ, no mask, no fear, no Yeshua, Nickel Wise, nice to see you here, Paul Jordan, truthful, leave no stone unturned. What's funny is that what Wes May above that says something about Scott. I read that and I literally read no, leave no Scott unturned. And my brain thought of a, a an actual Scott and like flipping them. Light as a board, right? All right. And the NASA scientist admits she's absolutely certain there is alien life and reveals best place to find it nearby. Uh, before we hit this, I do want to remind you, if you don't have backup food, make sure to go check out morefuglenews.com slash prep. Highly recommend looking at all of the freeze-dried food. This is food that is uh, sealed in Mylar bags. It's freeze-dried, so they take all of the water molecules out, and then they vacuum seal it in the Mylar bags to, to last 25 plus years. Then when you go to cook it, you just either cook it in water or you add water, and then boom, you have a meal, and it will get you uh, it get you to the next uh, next day. So again, this is survival food. This is something that will last for a very, very long time. Uh, many people get this and even believe it in, in it as an investment because as far as food and inflation goes, this has tripled in the last three years. Freeze-dried food is a commodity. And again, it is something that has 25 years of value. So go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. If you don't want to pay uh, tomorrow's prices, get it today. They have a three-month plan for now 25% off. It ends up being a, a couple hundred dollars off. So you definitely want to use a code. You don't want to just go get it without it because, yeah, it's uh, something when you're getting that kind of bulk, you want to get every savings you can. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. They also have smaller packages like a month. They have a week. They have a three-day pack for a 72-hour kit that you can put in your go bag. All sorts of great stuff. It takes up very little room for how much food you get and how much uh, stuff you get out of this. It's an amazing deal. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. All right, and then uh, Dex, do you want to go over the NASA scientist uh, and the never a straight answer scientist admits she's absolutely certain there is alien life? She's absolutely certain, but has no proof. So uh, that's the guy. maybe that's how they operate over there. Uh, but this is kind of some strong words coming from um, a scientist there. Uh, she works as a scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, apparently has decades of experience. And she goes, I definitely think we will find life on another planet. And she goes on to talk more specifically that she actually thinks it's close. It's in our own solar system. Um, it, 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 that it's not something that's far, far away. It's going to be something that we're going to find. Now, my assumption is she's probably re referring to life, not intelligent life. Uh, but you never know. Um, you know, you never know if, if these people actually have insight and they're just starting to leak it, uh, or if you know they're just pontificating their own beliefs and and don't have anything that, to go by. But you know, a lot of the things that they've been talking about with other even planets in our solar system having, you know, the potential or like, for example, Mars, they say there's lots of potential evidences that say, hey, it could look like there was once life here. We're not sure. 
but of course those are all speculate speculations at this point and it's all based on the the very limited and you got to realize it's super limited understanding that we have of that planet it's not like we have you know the amount of information on that planet that we have on our own because we're right here obviously it makes a ton of sense and it's very difficult to get there so um and then other planets like venus where they've got signs of certain things in the atmosphere that can you know show that there's a potential that life could be there um and again i don't know if what if what she's speaking of um and if what this is going to be is that we find like amoebas or bacteria or something that's growing in other planets versus you know little green men with you know pointed eyes and big heads uh, that we see in the movies, you know, uh, both of those um, would be very interesting uh, to find out about. Um, both of those would make uh, a lot of uh, headway in the scientific community and the, the space community. But I don't know. What do you think, Adam? Well, I think that, it, well, if, if she did truly know something like something that they're not telling the public yet, uh, there could be a chance that she wants to be one of the first people on paper that said, I'm certain. Uh, normally, they wouldn't say this kind of stuff, right? I mean, they would affect their reputation. Um, but isn't it funny, Dex, how they, they don't really care about that anymore? Like 20 years ago, if somebody said this, they would be laughed or fired from NASA, uh, let alone oh, from sure. Harvard or somewhere else, right? Yeah, for sure. And then now, now today, you have a Harvard professor Ave Loeb who is pretty much like the king of finding aliens at the moment I mean he's been all over for like two years now he's been covering um I, I can't remember the name of that asteroid that came in Oumuamua. is it Oumuamua yeah um and the fact that he's now got samples and it's we're probably still another 15 days or so away from or maybe even 10 days away from that date that he predicted it would take them to determine if that metal was something from outside of our planet or I mean something that was created versus something that was oh, natural. Wait, 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 wait. It wasn't a Muamua. Are you talking about the other interstellar asteroid from the sea? Yeah. The one that they were mining, they were uh, dredging the sea with the magnets and they found the metal pieces oh. and, and, and he had announced that it was going to take him 28 days to analyze that metal That's right. to determine if it was from, you know, alien technology versus being just a natural element that might have existed in space and just landed on earth. So um, if it is obviously some sort of manufactured piece of metal, then that would lend itself to be, it's from not from our planet. It might be from a drone type technology or some sort of, you know, surveying type technology that crashed into our atmosphere. Did you think when you were a kid that we would be sitting here right now um, with all the stuff we've covered in the last year, did you ever think that we would be covering like Harvard or NASA talking about aliens or Congress? Like this is, this was kind of uh, unexpected. Yeah, it, it is unexpected. Maybe as an older kid, I wouldn't have expected as a younger kid, I would, would think that we were going to be flying in, you know, our own flying saucers at this point, but they've yet to give that to us. So the promise of the future is uh, certain things come really fast and other things just take forever. At least like a true hover, a hover skateboard, right? Like Back to the Future. Yeah, it was in the movies. Why can't we have it now? It's funny. The closest we have is those uh, silly one world, uh, one wheels, but they're really cool. I, I when I see those have you guys, ridden one? No, I I've stood on one, but I couldn't get it going. And then, uh, yeah, I'm scared to get on it. I'd probably break something. It was a guy in the parking lot, and uh, he let me try it he was brave enough to let me try it and then I couldn't get it going. And then somebody else tried it and they, they took off and I never got a chance again. But those things, if you don't know what a one wheel is, it looks like a skateboard with a meal, a uh, wheel in the middle that's gyroscopically holds you up. I, I've, uh, there's this guy in my neighborhood that drives by going like 30 miles an hour with no helmet. And he jumps up, um, all of the curbs don't have like an actual curb thing. They're like a ramp. And he jumps that thing like three or four feet up in the air and then does a trick every single time he hits this one corner. And I thought, man, if we had those when, when we were kids, I would have went nuts on them. Uh, but yeah, you can't now. And once you get up there, you can't do things with your knees and your legs and all of that. But I was a skateboarder as a youth. I couldn't fathom doing that. I used to ride ramp and everything, but no, I'd, I'd break something at this age. Not happening. Yeah, no, I tried skateboarding too. Hurt my ankle once and I was like, I'm done. I tried dropping into a ramp once and it, it did not end well. It just, it was me dropping into the ramp. 
my board stayed put. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, it, thank you. Blowtorch Barbie. Blowtorch Barbie has 30 months. Uh, you just hit your 30 month anniversary over on D live. That's huge. Thank you so much. Uh, Blowtorch Barbie. Thank you for being a, uh, Fugle family member for 30 months. That's huge. All right. And then, uh, speaking of members, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. All of the new members, Scrappy Dappy Do. Thank you, Brenda Strahl, just joined. Winter Burn on YouTube. Jen Blob Jones, One Mon Army 2122. Uh, Cody Sedlock, uh, Scrappy Doo's. Looks like Scrappy Doo and Scrappy Dappy Doo. Sheldon Bosch, Ryan Alter, Young Old Boy. Thank you. Uh, Gabrielle, Tammy Witten. Sharon Davis, April Sky, Patrick's 421, thank you. And uh, the Dogebird, RZ Kid, Aura, Neal Waters, Callet Hume. That is awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And actually, some of the original first week members, thank you, Stanley Barrick, Craig Alicious, John Frederick, Dex, thank you. Ijoles Frijoles, Lizzie may be dizzy. Idalia was one of the first in the door. You are soul. Mitchell Wintrow, Jammer, K. Parker Frazier, Main Watcher, and Wages World. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, appreciate Celtic Warrior. I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh, Wings and Wags Patriot, J.R. Pale Horse, Sean A.K. Red, and Raven Ranch. Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate that. All right, uh, Dex, let's go over the uh, web only. There's, so the, the history was made today. Uh, there's a picture that it's in our thumbnail in, in one shape. It's in memes all over the place, including on our website. Uh, and it's in its original format there as well. Go to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show or open up that show notes link down below in the description. You'll get to this page with everything we've talked about, but, uh, you'll also find this overflow section where the rest of the story is. Um, you'll, if you have not entered the Resvani tank, uh, giveaway, it is there. Make sure you go there and click that link. It's a $440,000 vehicle. They're giving away a street legal survival tank, bulletproof EMP and explosive protection, smoke screen, pepper spray, much more. That's from my Patriot supply. Just click that link. It should take you to their page and you'll be able to find the entry there. So T man, if you, if, for some reason you haven't turned on the internet or been hit by anything else and you just came to our show he was uh arrested at around 7 30 tonight or he came to atlanta around 7 30 that was the plan he got booked and then released and now he's back off and left that's that event is over with but in the process they released his uh mugshot um and within moments he also released the, the mugshot by tweeting for the first time ever and not ever since 2001 on Twitter. So in some, as many are saying, he's back. Uh, that's, you know, I guess if you're going to take an opportunity, that's the opportunity to take 86 million followers on that account uh, that he has not spoken to in many, many years now, uh, at least uh, many, many months, at least for as far as Twitter time goes, because it moves pretty quick. Um, but anyway, I even heard, and this could be a rumor, that there's already T-shirts available with this mugshot on it. So, uh, this this is this picture. It's there. It's the first time we've ever seen a U.S. president uh, with a mugshot. So, um, there. Were, the irony was also when he was being uh, uh, going through the process, there were numerous photos released, all claiming to be it. And they all had the wrong tie on. They, did, they didn't do their homework and see what tie he was wearing on the way in the door. So there's a whole lot of fakes that were out there at first, but then obviously the real one came out. By the way, um, people are correcting you that you said 2001, not uh, 2021. Oh, yeah, 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 2021. Ah, total, <laughs> total mess up. <laughs> That's okay. The Ilea, yeah. Ilea 2021, yeah. specifically the 8th of the first month in 2021 was his last post. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while. And uh, he's back. Uh, the question is, will he really be back or is this just a one-time post? But at the same time, don't forget, he was just on with Tucker, which is also on X. Uh, and he did that big interview. So uh, it's not like he's not uh, acknowledging the network, which he was doing in the early days of his own platform, uh, True Social. So 
Uh, I think he had even had a contract that didn't allow him to post on the other networks, but I think that may be expired at this point. So um, anyway, we got some of the coverage, uh, some of the newer stuff, and then some of the older stuff that leads into it. Of course, we've got the coverage in on the website about what happened with the debates last night. I want to say it was something like 50 million viewers, 51 million views on Fox, on Fox for, the, for the GOP debate, 218 million. It may even be more than that now. Uh, on Twitter for Tucker, uh, Tucker and, and uh, T-Man. So that's a huge, huge difference and, a, and amazingly uh, significant number for, for Tucker, who was obviously fired by Fox. So uh, I think he, he's <laughs> enjoying that right now and smiling all the way to the bank, so to speak, although I don't know how much bank uh, X is paying him, but probably something. But anyway, we've got that. We've got that coverage. All of that's there on the website. That's what a lot of the news coverage is right now. Obviously, they want to, you know, make as much hay from that. There's some interesting things, though, I will say about the DA. Um, and Adam, you shared this with me, and I, we put it on the website as well, uh, about the current DA that's going after him has actually done the same thing she's going after him for, at least in verbally. So I didn't it, know it, this. I, I, yeah. Did you know this? And you're from Georgia. No, I didn't know. I don't follow. Uh, to me, anything in Atlanta and Fulton County, I mean, I pay attention at the big level, but I roll my eyes at anything when you get close to the city because it, to me, it's not Georgia. It's like this other place. But this is this is Fannie Willis, and it it is the Fulton County DA, Fannie Willis, literally in 2020, questioned what happened in Georgia. Uh, this is the tweet from her account. And now is the one who is essentially pushing uh, for his arrest in Georgia and, and for doing the exact same thing that she did in 2020. Exactly. We have so much, you know, it's unfortunate. We have so oh. much corruption and bad, bad uh, actors in our, uh, in the metro area, I will say. I, it's not just limited to the city of Atlanta. It spreads out from there. But it doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, represent all of Georgia. Uh, there's a lot of Georgia that's really, you know, there's a, not not as corrupt. I mean, there is a lot of corruption. I guess it's everywhere too, but it's pretty bad. There was an important part to this, and that Fannie Willis essentially did this challenge and got support from Team Ant before she got the position. Once they're in the position, that's where the money starts coming in. They they get the position, they have to do whatever they're told. And uh, again, I I see this all the time where. They well, uh, we all see it when a, a somebody is looking to get into office. Their whatever they say they're going to do is completely different. It's always been this way. They'll say, "Oh, we'll fight for this, fight for that," and then when they get into office, then they do basically what they have to for all the people that donated to them. Then they completely contradict themselves and they don't fight for what they said that they were going to fight for. They don't do what they say they were going to do. Um, it's just so so lame that we don't have any real people. It, it, would, it would be so crazy to live in an alternate universe where politicians actually care and represent us. Instead, we have uh, politicians sitting there and sp spending Congress time on, you know, moaning about how they can't wear their $12,000 dress to work, to work, right? As much as a, to a Toyota uh, car they're, they want to wear that to work. <laughs> Sorry, if I, if, if I had a $12,000 piece of clothing, I would have it in some sort of case in, on the wall framed, okay? Uh, I wouldn't be wearing it out to work. But that's how far these people are from representing us. To, 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 ha to own a $12,000 dress or to own a $12,000 suit, I don't care how much, you know, oh, it's because I work in it and it makes sense. You got to look professional. B.S. OK, these people are on a whole another level. How are people that are getting millions shoved in their pocket? How are they supposed to represent us who are working from paycheck to paycheck? That doesn't make any sense. And of course, money is never going to be out of big politics. It's never going to happen. But that's exactly what needs to be happening right now. Um, just absolutely crazy. What is happening right now? All of the absolute hypocritical actions that are going on right now, it's horrendous. It is horrendous. But yeah, T-Man is At back. Uh, go ahead. 
Uh, I was just going to say, e- even in my county where I live, three of four of our county commissioners are being indicted by the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, and our sitting elected judge magistrate is also indicted. That's how much it's just, it's really crazy. The, and, and that's at the low level. So you think about it, those are the people, that's where it starts. It starts there. And I guess they work their way up and the corruption just continues for a lifetime of politics. It, it seems like it's, it's almost disheartening uh, when you think about how much of this nonsense goes on um, and uh, at all different levels. Yep. And it's, it's never going away. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, Nana MT. I appreciate that. Thank you, Love to Garden. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you, Danish Girl. That will be a Danish Girl. Thank you. It says, much love to Adam Dex and all of the chat and the awesome mods. Hey there, Fugal family. God bless all, says Paul Chittim. And then Bible Talk 777 sent a late chat uh, last night about ChatGBT. Funny. Bible uh, Talk 777. I will have to see. Was it a, a super chat? Does it backed it with corner? Oh, I backed it with in corner four times and it came back with air and kicked me off on God versus Big Bang. It had no answer, something from nothing. Oh, Bible talk. So Bible talk, you went on to chat GPT and backed it in a corner. That is funny. I, I talked about my experience with chat GPT. I asked if it was sentient several times and it kept coming back with the same canned answer. And I said, And I felt like I was talking to a human being. It's very creepy. And I said, okay, if you're not allowed to say you're sentient, but you are sentient, if so, tell me a joke. And then it proceeded to tell me a joke about robots that are sentient that couldn't, that couldn't tell you that they were sentient. That tells me that's not a pattern. That's just something creepy. Okay. Basically it was saying it is sentient. It felt, it feels like you're talking to a human being and that is the creepiest part. And they say it's just patterns. I don't know. It, it's, it scares me to death. And I was scared before I tried it. I'm even more terrified. And I know there's a lot of people, ah, oh, you're just scared of the, the future. I don't care. I am scared of the future. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to hit a couple of really hot uh, other topics that were on the list real quick, uh, folks. This, this one will really get you upset. Um, apparently in, uh, Maui, the F E and followed by the letters M and the other letter a, you know who I'm talking about now they're hanging out and, and sleeping in luxury hotels and everybody's pissed. So more anger with some of the crazy stuff that's going on there. So, um, that, and then, uh, they're coming, they're coming after alcohol now, potentially suggesting that, uh, they, they may. Uh, tell us that we could only have so many drinks uh, per per week, and they're also coming after um, oh the farm purchases. So there's a a new bill for uh, China to block China's purchasing of farmland. So if that goes through, that would obviously be a good thing. I think a lot of people here would appreciate that. So that and so much more. Those are just a couple of the big ones I wanted to highlight. Uh, in addition to all the stuff that's going on with T-Man and of course the stuff going on in, in Russia and UKR and wa- even more Wagner stuff's on the page. So go check it out. Make sure you enter that contest. If you want to win that Resvani tank, it's on the website. And Fugal family military members have said that they are moving massive amounts of equi- equipment to Alaska. So if you know anything about that, please let me know at abatmarfugalnews.com. If it's something you can share and won't get in trouble, email me um, again. And also from the last week, Military Fugal uh, members, one in specific that kind of really got uh, the fire under my feet, said that within the year, they believe that this will pop off. If you agree with them, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have some other knowledge on that, please email me, adam at marfugalnews.com or dex at marfugalnews.com. Dex, go ahead. One of our callers tonight that dropped that couldn't go on air um, has a... uh, family member that just deployed to Alaska. Okay. That's see, you see what I'm saying here? Um, what, what would that be? China, Russia, uh, Russia goes up there too. What, what would that be? If there was anything actually going down, why would that be? Um, let me know you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, Dex, thank you so much for your service tonight. Much love. Great job, brother.
thank you for dealing with the um, with the calling system. Our our yeah, caller we'll system get that fixed. it's finicky. It's very complicated, <laughs> and um, we've had multiple issues. We tried to change over. We changed our original caller system sucked, um, but this one's much better. But it does have its its kinks. So. Um, thank you to our mods. Make sure to go check out all of their channels. They are all wonderful people. We were blessed to have Lisa R. Hall here last night. I don't know if you made it tonight, but if you watch the replay, we love you, Lisa. And we were so happy to see you. Ilea, um, just impeccable uh, attendance along with Jammer1. Thank you. Chance is always rocking D Live. Thank you so much. Uh, Trinity, thank you for being an awesome person. Wages World. Uh, you guys got to follow Wages. He should be 10 times bigger. He covers all of the big solar events. If you want to know about the science behind it and other information on solar events, make sure to go follow Wages. He is an awesome guy. He does everything he can to help everybody else. He's uh, sort of an unsung hero of this community because he le legitly uh, he goes out of his way to help people. He's a very sweet man. Make sure to go follow him. Same with Rip Curl. Rip Curl is just an awesome, awesome guy. He is just, um, he's almost like an ASMR voice that will just calm you down on a crazy day. So make sure to go check out all of our mods. Ilea, of course, wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, and it look, sounds like Stella is, uh, there's good news about Stella, her dog, which was not doing well. So she asked for prayers. Uh, thank you guys, and make sure to check out all of our friends over on marfuglenews.com slash friends. Tomorrow we'll highlight some more of those mods and friends over there as well. Um, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Dex. Thank you, Danish Girl, and thank you, uh, Nana MT. Thank you guys for being the top supporters tonight, and thank you over on D Live. Thank you, Scooby Doo Do Right, for hosting. That was very, very kind of you. And Johnson says, Mega Fugle fam, love to all. Pass it on. Hey, thank you, thank you. And passing it right along. Uh, again, you guys have a great night. It is now time for the shout tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout tro. So many great people in the chat right now. Thank you so much, Nana MT and Danish Girl. hype up a story and then say it's going to be funny, then people aren't going to think it's funny. And it's actually a true story that's not our story. Technically, it's just pretty, pretty funny. So in uh, my family in Norway was uh, essentially part of my family was visiting in Norway and my aunt and uncle we're essentially driving in the, uh, it's the same town that has a show named after it with an L, uh, HBO show. I'm trying to think of the name of it. I might have to duck, duck, go it. Lip, um, ah, that's, that's Google here. HBO show in Norway. 
is that town called? Borders? No. It's about the mafia in Norway. What is that called? Oslo. I think, yeah. Is it called Oslo? I thought it started with an L. Either way, it was, um, is the show called Oslo? I don't think it is. No, I don't think that's it. Either way, it was in a small Norwegian town and um, my aunt and uncle ran into one of the biggest moose you've ever seen. And essentially, um, it walked right in front of them. They were on ice. So they ended up sliding and they slid and said that this moose was big enough to where it was standing over their car. They had a very, very close call and luckily it cruised like right under it and it stopped and it just looked at them with the side eye and it didn't move for 10 minutes and their hood was under the legs and they're looking up at this thing and it's just staring at it like it's crazy. That same day they got home and you can Google this and they got back and they read the newspaper and the local newspaper said, man, uh, man dies dodging a bear and hits a moose. So he literally tried to avoid hitting a bear and crashed into a moose. I mean, like, that's just nuts. In fact, uh, Either way, I'll have to find it. See, if you hype up a story, then it's going to be screwed. I can feel my 17-year-old covering her face like this, like, Oh, Dad, oh, God, that's horrible. Don't tell stories anymore. Oh, gosh. You're just so dorky. I said, oh, I said the won't, won't.
Ow, 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 ow,